Okay, um, we'll talk a little bit about pass protecting now. And we'll start with the basic principles of pass protecting. And most of them relate to drop back pass, but you can use them with a sprint out and play action also. Uh, first of all, the key to drop back pass protection is that the offensive blocker sustains and maintains the same demeanor as he does on his running game, which means he's got to have uh, his base, he's got to have the good wide base, he's got to have his center of gravity, which means he doesn't want to lean and tip over, and he's got to be in a good demeanor. So uh, a, a drill and an attitude we start with first is on our pass protection. We really try to get the blockers and make them get off their center of gravity. We try to pull them and shrug them and try to tip them over and push them backward and forward. And we want the offensive blocker to maintain center of gravity. And let me show you what center of gravity is. Let's just assume through this whole thing that this is the center. This is the left tackle right here, Anthony Munoz. And he's blocking a man over him on his outside shoulder, all right? And we won't get into the exact specifics now, but just an attitude is that when this guy blocks him, he has to have a center of gravity. And center of gravity means if I'm the left tackle, I can't be approaching the man like this or back on my heels or going too far forward. There's that same demeanor, all right, now watch it. See, I'm on my insteps, all right? My knees are kind of in. I am a, uh, I'm a knee bender. See, the knee's bent, all right, whatever. I'm not a waist bender. I'm not up on the balls of my feet. I have the same demeanor as I have eh, basically in the running game, except on pass protection, you're not surging forward quite as much. So the basic pass protection set would look like if Anthony's playing left tackle and he's pass setting on a man over him, all right, this is his inside foot, this is his outside foot, his hands are up, and they're basically, his fingers are basically almost touching each other. His head isn't way back, but it isn't way forward. He kind of tucks his chin in for power, like he's bench pressing. He's got a little forward lean, his hands are up, and he's got the demeanor, all right? So if you look at my, my back angle and my feet and my anchor and my ability to pop with the hands, boom, boom, pass protection. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to get over my center of gravity. I don't want to go too far to my left or to my right. Okay, so in pass protection, trying to teach a guy about center of gravity, we would lock two guys up together, one being the pass blocker. Another man would grab a hold of his jersey or shoulder pad and pull him and jerk him and push him backward and work him from the right to the left. And through the whole scheme of things, the blocker has got to fight all these things. Remember, if he gets off his center of gravity, he'll be back on his heels. He'll be pulled on his toes. You'll push him and pull him. So through the whole thing, you want the pass blocker to stay on the center of gravity, okay? Which means you have equal weight between both sides of an imaginary post goes right through the middle of your body. So you... You're like a sumo wrestler, basically, I guess. I think a big key to pass blocking is the balance that you have in your in your, your football position. Let's say you're, you're going to get a guy inside, you don't want to take your upper body and lean inside because if you have all your weight going inside, it makes it a lot easier for him to beat you outside. So what you want to do is you want to get your chest up and your head up so you can see your target, and as you move inside, you want to be balanced. So if he does continue to go inside, you can go inside and continue with the strong inside foot or a strong post foot, but if he comes back outside and you're moving inside, then, then you can move back outside. So if you have your balance, if you're balanced up, it makes you, it gives you the ability to move inside and outside a lot easier compared to if you're, let's say we're going outside and you're here, he goes inside, you can't recover and get back to the inside, but if you're moving the insteps of your feet, and all of a sudden he goes back inside, and you can go back inside. Opposed to, whoa, if he goes back inside, you can't move back inside quickly. So therefore, if you're going inside to begin with, then you can move outside. If you're going outside to begin with, then you can move inside. So balance is very important in pass blocking. Show him behind now. This is my inside. Here, going inside, once again, 
going inside. Now let's go to the outside. From here, balance. It allows you to go from the outside inside, from inside outside. In the heat of the action, sometimes these guys forget and they get a little anxious and they, they, they don't do what they're supposed to. But most of the time, when a man misses a pass block, it's because he's leaned, he's overcommitted, he's got over his center of gravity. Now with that in mind, let's go to the contact phase of the pass protection, which some people call the punch, okay, or the jam. And that's where you're making contact with your hands. I believe in all levels now, the use of the hands is totally legal. And in my opinion, on regular pass protection. Now when I say regular pass protection, I mean that you're not going aggressive into the man, which we do sometimes. We go after a man very aggressively. But when we teach normal pass protection, when we jam, all right, our jam or our six inch punch, and we'll show you exactly how our hands are. We try to keep the hands in motion so they're doing something, but basically when we strike, it's a strike with the elbows, the wrists, the heels of the hands, and you basically strike with the heels of your hands. We don't hold the hands out into here. We don't hold the hands in here. We kind of cross the thumb, bam, bam. If you're really, if your demeanor is good where you're on your insteps, all right, then basically you're jamming with your legs. That's where you get all your power because you don't ever want to tip or lean. So you're punching out with your hands. You want to get to a full lockout and then bring them back again so you can start over. Basically on pass protection, you're trying to push yourself, boom, boom, away from the defender. And I don't mean back up into the quarterback. But on run blocking, you're trying to drive forward, but on pass blocking, you're always trying to maintain that separation. So when you punch or use your hands, you don't really want to come out right now, they might knock your hands down. There's an art of getting your hands up, see that angle of my hands? So now I can time it, and then I bring them back. Timing, timing, okay? If you didn't time your punch, you might go like this, they slap your hands down. So we have a number of drills, to teach them how to jam, excuse me, to teach them how to jam or punch and how to time their punch. For example, the center, all right, let's draw the center. He's got a nose guard right tight to his nose. Of course, he's got to snap the football. He can put his hand right now, what we call a lockout. He doesn't have to bring his hands up because the nose is so close to him. When he snaps that ball, bam! He gets the hand right on the nose guard because he's so darn close to him, okay? Where, let's say the right guard has got a man a little looser and a little deeper, he has to get his hands in a ready position so he can time his punch or his jam. So there's a very important phase of whether you shoot your hands out right now or whether you bring them up and time your strike. And by mired into the ground means you just pass set, you set your feet, and you sit there. As you set your feet, there always should be some slight activity, but I'm not on the balls of my feet. But if you're watching from behind, there's some activity so I can, you know, and I'm on my insteps, I'm ready to go right and left. The point I'm trying to make about the jam or the punch, whether you punch a big bag, you punch shields, you punch each other, the anchor, when you anchor your legs, you're stronger, bam, bam, and you can really pop and punch out. Now there are different types of punches, all right? All right, you can punch with one hand, all righty, like the center has to do, because he has to snap the ball. All right, you can punch with two hands or fists, like a guard would be able to do when there's a man on his outside shoulder. And then there's a one-handed punch, all right, that our tackles use at times when, let's say here's Anthony Munoz over here at left tackle, and his man is wide coming upfield as he comes over towards the man, he might just use his inside punch. So when you're teaching your offensive lineman to use their hands, it's a pretty good idea to teach them how to use a one-handed punch, use the two-handed punch, 
all right, is just come out here and have one hand ready to fight all the counters. They try to grab your arms and punch and punch and so forth. So without making it too complicated, there's a lot of counter punching, punching with one hand, punching with two hands. I guess what I'm saying, man, men and women, is that when you're pass blocking, you should never reach to get your punch. So if there's a man on your outside, watch me punch now, I'm the right tackle, that your outside hand, that would get you off your center of gravity. So as I punch, see, watch, this is my outside hand. My inside hand might go a little further because if I use my outside hand, it gets me off my center of gravity. So the wider the guy is you're gonna hit, the less your outside hand punches, okay? I've tried to talk a little bit about uh, the center of gravity on your pass protection. Now don't forget, our right side linemen are in a right-handed stance because we have to open up to the outside more times than the inside. Our left side linemen are to the inside, uh, excuse me, are in left-handed stances. So the up foot, our inside foot is called our post foot. The foot that's really strong inside, our outside foot is called our kick foot and we're trying to maintain our center of gravity and basically we've got a slight stagger all the time or we try to get a slight stagger so from looking at me from behind i'm a right guard or right tackle i'd prefer to have this right foot back a little more than i would be totally parallel because when i'm parallel i can get off my center of gravity when i have a slight stagger it enables me to sit my butt down and actually punch up a little more up than out see my punching up now i won't if i miss the guy i won't tip forward but but that helps me because I'm in a little more of a stagger, but still everything's in that demeanor with the power. All right, now, really the most important thing on pass pro is your target. What we'd like to emphasize on your target is don't watch the defender's head. Don't watch the flailing of his arms so much. He'll give him a head fake and the blocker will watch the head and he'll tip over here and the guy will come inside. So what we like to tell our blockers is to zero in on a target. And let's say this, the man we're blocking is number 66. This is his jersey, okay? This is his sleeve to his jersey, coming over into here, so forth and so on, all right? When we say, let's zero in on a target, if this is the blocker right here, an inside target is the area just about the crease of his uh, sleeve right there, all right? So an inside target might be right in that area. Make your eyes big right there. An outside target might be the opposite uh, seam in that sleeve. And a midpoint target might be right underneath the chin. For example, you're the right guard. You've got a man head up with you. You're worried about the inside, all right? So as I line up right on the man head up with me, I've got an inside target. So the ball is snapped. See those big guys on that inside target. I'm not looking at the head. I'm not looking at the outside, but I watch the target. He can give me all those head fakes, but if I see where his trunk is going, that's pretty much where he's going. So there is specific drills to try to teach those big eyes, those big eyes. So when they come out of that stance, they get those big eyes. Okay, you understand what I mean? Just like big bug eyes. Now, there are some drills that we use that we actually put our finger up and we have the man go over a dummy to move his feet. He has to watch the target. Then myself as a coach, I might give him a head fake and do this to him. And if he followed my head, he didn't watch the target. This is the hardest thing to teach because an offensive lineman comes up and watches everything. When you zero in on a target, it will get you not to bite on different head fakes and moves, okay? So this is a very important point. And then really the best way to train it is just put a man, say on the right tackle, put him on your outside shoulder and you say, take an outside target. I pass it, there's the outside target. Take an inside target, there's the inside. Take a middle target, right? Why would you take a middle target? Well, maybe the guy has a tendency to bull rush you more. Why would you take an inside target? Well, maybe you're afraid of the inside. Why would you take an outside target? Well, maybe you've got help from the next man to your inside blocking. So you can figure out those reasons. But again, on your pass protection, you need a target drill. And again, a good one is to just wave the hand, wave the hand, and then give him a head fake, try to slap his hands down, make him go over a dummy while he's reading your finger and in some of those things.
So we generally emphasize a target, okay? So we've been through uh, the basic punch technique. We've been through the target. Now let's get into some basic footwork uh, on blocking some people, all right? Let's go to a drop back pass and our left tackle. Let's say he's got a man slightly on his outside shoulder, right? But the man is close to him, right? We call that kind of a tight five technique, right? Remember, the left foot is the kick foot, the right foot is the post foot, all right? What we'd like our left tackle, Anthony Munoz, to do, he's gonna move that outside foot and keep that inside foot anchored till he covers the man up, okay? So for example, if I'm the left tackle, I've got a man on my outside shoulder, ball will be snapped, I'll take this outside foot and see me move it over, my feet will be kind of moving in place, all right? But you see that position and I see I turn slightly, but I haven't really moved this foot over. Okay, now, let's say the man is just a little bit wider on me, all right? I might take a little wider set with that outside foot. See, it's a little bigger. You see this action? And I cover him up. I get all of them. You see how low that puts me? Boom! The lower I set, the more power it is. So basically, we've got a little stagger. We set the outside foot. We put the whole foot on the ground. We try to punch the guy. Punch him hard, right in place. And when the man's fairly close to us, we can take a big set with our feet like this, which puts us low so we can punch him. All right, let's say a man's to our inside, like that. Now we'd move our inside foot, okay, over, just like that. See that foot, boom. And the closer he is to us, the, the, the further I move it, see how low it puts me? But through this whole phase, we always have our center of gravity. So when Anthony sets outside, here's the left tackle sitting on a man outside. When he sets over here, he doesn't want to lean. He wants to, Watch my feet now. I'm gonna set on a man on my outside shoulder. Watch my left foot. See that? That's the way I teach. See where my weight is? It's in the middle. I teach him to creep that foot out there. So then when he pass sets, you see that foot go out there? Like, see where my center? This is leaning. So all your pass sets need to be ones where when they set, they're still on their center of gravity. So to make a long story short, similar to the running game, when you have a man that's close to you or fairly close to you, you want to cover him up. You want to get all of them, okay? And you want to get all of them in a low position so you can punch up. Remember, your inside foot's your post foot, your outside foot's your kick foot. Alrighty. So what we just discussed is, I can demonstrate as a right tackle, I got a man on my outside shoulder. Boom, there's the set. I got a man inside of me, there's the set. But in no means have I got over my center of gravity. Have I got over my center of gravity. You have to teach them what it feels like by moving those feet like that and keep your center of gravity what it's like not to lean. Also what we did when we first uh, learned how to kick inside and still be balanced up to move back outside or the same thing, kick outside and move inside. Again, we didn't do it this slow, but a feeling you have is if your foot moves inside, your weight is still right here. You're still balanced. You see how the foot has gone out and you're in the instep, but your whole body hasn't moved to the inside. Same thing with the outside. I'm here. I know a guy's coming from my outside. I've moved that foot and leg out there, but I've not shifted my weight outside. So we do drills like that to teach them how to move their post leg or their kick foot. But remember, we'd like the, always the outside foot back, all right? We'd always like the inside foot up. Now, not going forward, but at least staying parallel to where it started, all right? So I'm the right tackle. I got a man on my inside, boom, there's the move. There's the move. It's not back here, all right? But on an outside shade, I move it back a little bit. Watch that. The clown's foot, the whole foot on the ground. See, the knees are in for power, but the feet are out. See that power angle right there? Boom. So that's how we set. Okay, I've just demonstrated slowly how that foot moves inside. Now, if I did have a guy inside him in my, and I'm in my stance, it moves there. Instead of the creeping, as we showed you, to get the feel, we now have to move that foot inside. See how the weight is still here? Same thing going outside. You understand? It's moving outside right here. You have the weight and you're low, ready to punch. I'll do it from behind now. 
you coming from the outside, right there. You're going inside. What we just highlighted basically was that Anthony Munoz has got a man on his outside shoulder or on his inside shoulder or head up with him. He's going to take a pass set that's going to put him low. Because the closer the man is to him, the lower he wants to be so he's got power when he punches him on his pass protection. There's no sense of him standing straight up and just dancing with the man. He might as well stay low and give him a heck of a shot because we said the whole premise behind all this, that all our power comes from our legs. And are you a knee bender? Do you have the weight on your insteps, which gives you power? So we actually pass block. We're pass blocking with our legs, even though we're extending our arms because we have a good center of gravity. So if Anthony's man is on his outside shoulder or on his inside shoulder and he can reach him with one big step, he'll take it, which will put him low. Okay, now when Anthony takes these steps, if there's a man on his outside shoulder and he takes a step but he shoots inside, he's got to come back and block it. But since his base might be a little wider than we like it because he's past set, he has to bring this foot back in before he moves that foot. I'll show you. We call this a five back to a four. This man's in a five position, but he slants inside. So Anthony Munoz's set would be, he'd be in his stance, he'd shift his butt this way, he'd take that set, and the man shoots inside. Well, he doesn't want to drop this foot and open up the gate to the quarterback. He'll set, the man will come in, he'll bring this foot back, okay, because he's not leaning, and then he'll go inside with this foot and be very strong with his inside foot, which we call a power step. So basically, when the man shoots inside on him, we want to get to what we call a power step, where that inside leg is strong on the ground. And that's exactly how it moves. Watch it move, boom, boom, right? Now, we don't want to get over the center of gravity, so it's flat-footed, it's strong, but we take away the inside. So Anthony set up out here, the man shot inside, he moves this foot back to where he started, and he goes to the power step. When we go inside, man eventually goes in, we want a power step, strong with our inside leg. We don't want to drop that foot and open up the gates to the quarterback. Remember, on the left hand, so we're strong with that foot, right? So if Anthony sets outside and the man goes in, if we start to do this, we get too spread out. So we set out, we're on our center of gravity, he comes back, and this foot will come like that, and he'll go to his power step. So we come from a five, back to a four, to a power step. So what I was trying to demonstrate up here was, if Anthony's got a man on his outside shoulder and he sets, he still kind of holds that post leg so the man doesn't beat him inside. When he shoots in, he brings this foot back before he starts that one off. <clears throat> With the same premise now, if Anthony's got a guy slightly inside of him, he'll move his post foot over, okay, which will give him a little bit of a wide base, boom, like that. But if the man comes back outside like this, he'll bring this foot back before he moves that way. So we call this a four eye. It's a four inside back to a five. So picture the man on my inside shoulder. Anthony sets, but he comes back. Anthony will bring his foot back before he kicks, okay? Remember, the outside leg is back as we move it, but the inside leg is parallel as we move it. This is called a power step, okay? And this is called a kick step. All right? Of course, most of you people know about angles. So as the defensive man you're blocking, this again being Anthony, starts working wide, the only way for you to intercept him is to lose ground on an angle and keep moving that outside foot. And we call that the kick step. So we've got to stay on the right course to block our man. So we tried to talk about double moves here. Double moves being we set outside, but the man goes in. We set inside, but the man goes out. What we just said was that we'd like to take a low pass set and stay as low as we can with the bent knee and the demeanor and punch him as hard as we can if the man's fairly close to us, where we can cover him with our feet, remember, using a target. If the man starts to get wide now, okay, like a wide rusher out into here, we don't take the big step anymore because it's too slow. We'll take two or three shorter steps to get out of here on this man. But the key to the pass protection is don't back straight up. Don't go out here. You've got to take the proper angle to intersect the guy, OK? We don't understand geometry because what we'd ideally like with our pass protection would be if these are both tackles, we want to get out on these defensive ends or tackles. And when the quarterback goes back, 
we'd like the pocket to look like this, right here. One big cup there, okay? If the tackle's back straight up, they push him right into the quarterback's face. So our protection is basically one we want to get on him with a proper angle, okay? Now, with that in mind, we'll cover the proper technique, okay, when a man is one. All right? Okay, let's do this. Let's have Anthony Munoz, and he's got a man that's a little bit looser than he, all right? So now he's got his left-handed stance, and now, so he doesn't, he's not too slow approaching the wide man, okay? We'll be in our left-handed stance with our hand is up and a two-pointer down. Now watch this foot right here. I'll move it over here, in step. Then I'll slide this way, all right? So my angles are such that I take three or four steps to get out there, but in no means do I want to get over my center of gravity. So that's why I watch the feet. The ankle and the knee go ahead of the hip. And we talk about in steps. In. Now see this thing reach? See that reach? That reaching effect with the clown's foot holds my weight inside so I don't tip. I can demonstrate a little bit better to my right that if the right tackle has got a man that's wide, his angle intersecting might be there because he's coming upfield. So watch the feet. Okay? But watch this, this action, clown's foot in step. Okay? As soon as I get over the outside of my foot, I lean. But when I work on the insteps, I keep my center of gravity. And basically, when you're pass blocking a wide guy, you take a kick step, then you slide. Then you take a kick step. It, most of the time, when you hit him or jam him, it would be kick, slide, kick. And on your second kick step, you should kick it back. And you should always punch with your inside foot's in the ground so you can do that. So it keeps your stagger. Remember we said the stagger keeps you from not falling. Okay, so what we discussed was when Anthony is using regular pass protection and he's got a man on his outside shoulder or his inside shoulder, he'll get as big as, a big a set as he can to keep him low, to keep his power so he can really punch the man. We talked about when Anthony's got a man that's wide now, he'll take shorter little steps to get out here on this intersection. He always wants to punch off his inside foot and keep kicking his back foot, okay? Now that's regular pass protection. Remember, we talked about if the man on his outside shoulder comes in, we talked about if the man on his inside shoulder comes out. Okay, there's, when you talk pass blocking, there's a lot of factors that go in to what technique you want to use. For myself personally, what I do is I study the film. I have to know who I'm playing against, what alignment he lines up in, what type of speed does he have? What's his best move? But let's just take general alignments right now. As an offensive tackle, as a left offensive tackle, I'm looking at a defensive end who is head up directly over me, and now I have to determine what type of pass set I'm gonna take. I have two pass sets that I usually go to the line with, and I'm gonna choose between the two. If the guy's right up, head up on me knows, I'm gonna take a First of all, a regular pass set. Again, the, the guy's head up, and I'm gonna take what you call a headset. I'm just gonna pass that on him real quick and then let him move to whatever move he has, basically just setting on him. Letting him make his moves and then I adjust and make my moves after he starts his pass rush. Another jump that is really becoming a favorite uh, protection for, I know a lot of our guys, and is probably one of my favorite, is why not on pass attack the defensive lineman? It's what we call jump the guy or a jump block on pass. So again, I'm talking about the defensive end directly overhead of me. So I'm here, I'm not gonna sit back in a pass set, I'm gonna attack the guy. So he's head up on me. What you wanna do as you, you work through your footwork, you wanna move the inside foot first, but a lot of times it's just a matter of getting to your man and making contact. So mentally you're thinking inside foot first, follow it up and then hit the guy. Mentally you're thinking that, but when physically when you're doing it, it might be so quick that you're hopping into the guy. But right now I'm just gonna teach you inside foot first, he's head up, you take this step first, 
boom. So it's almost depending on how close he is to you, inside, outside contact. So pass blocking, I'm gonna jump the guy. So it's just as quick as you can get to the guy and not allowing the defensive lineman to make a move. Now, our second pass set, the defensive lineman is not directly head up. He's in a, in a, a loose technique or a five, and he's, he shaded my outside shoulder, so um, he's not right on top of me where I can get him right away. So again, you come up to the line of scrimmage, you see that the defensive end is out a little wider. Okay, now I have still a couple more pass sets that I can use for a guy that's out a little wider. The number one being, again, that we can still jump the individual who's out there a little wider. But now we go to a lot of our run steps, and this is where we use the, the drop step, uh, make it appear to be a run, then the defensive lineman will really not know what's going on other opposed to setting like a pass. So if my guy's out here and I'm in my stance, in order, again, to cover him up, I'm gonna take this step here and then start at them like this and attack them as if it's a run, but it's a pass block, and therefore I'm jumping the guy. So a little quicker, it looks like, boom. So you're right there and you've attacked him and you've gotten out on him. So once again, he's wider, you're in your stance, you're here, 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 and you're into the guy. So you can jump the guy that's even wider. Okay, again, as I had a guy that was head up with me and I just pass at him, you can do the same thing with the guy that's out a little wider. You can pass at him because he's here. Again, you're here on the instep and you still have your weight inside and then you can continue to move out. So you have a regular, as most people that have played the game and continue to play, it's a regular pass set. But he's out a little wider and you're here. Then we also have a third pass set that we can use on a guy that's a little wider, which we call a scoot or a slide kick. The, the other one was a you kick first and then you slide. Well, now we have one where you slide the inside leg first and then you kick. Now, if the guy is not that wide, this is something that you really have to be careful with because you might have a tendency to rise up too high and be out of control if the guy's coming inside. So what it looks like is you might pre-kick as before it was here. Well, now I'm just gonna pre-kick and have this one out already. What I'll do is I can stay up or here and just bring this one just right here. So what I'm actually doing is sliding first and then kicking to a guy that's not real wide and a guy that's not directly over me. So it's here, shorter steps and you gotten out to your man a lot quicker, but still staying low and covering and getting out there to, to block your man. Okay, the third guy that we have, we've covered the guy that's directly overhead, the guy that's a little wider. Now we have the guy that's out there wide, maybe rushing in a nickel situation, a third and long. They put a speed guy out there. So now you have to keep that guy from getting to your quarterback. You're dealing with a lot of speed, and again, through watching film, studying your man, you know what his best moves are, and therefore you have to use what's best for you in order to cut that angle off. Going back to the uh, first two guys, I talked about the jump and the regular pass set, and then moving out with the slide, or the kick first and then slide. Now we're talking about jumping the real wide guy. Okay, I'm not worried about that wide guy coming in, so I can take that drop, and start out to him like I, I have to run block him way out there. So it's a little quicker pace, it's, you're here, and it's drop, you attack the man. Okay, that's called a jump, jumping on pass. Now you've got a, a tremendous speed guy out there, and you want to cut that angle, we have what you call scoot. I'm going to use a slide first, and when I use the slide first, move the inside foot first, I'm not worried about the guy coming inside. The same thing for when the guy's closer and I'm here, I'm moving this first. I'm not worried about the guy coming inside opposed to when I kick this foot first. Now I'm solid inside. I'm worried about the inside move. So now the guy's out wide. I'm not worried about his inside move because he's a speed guy. So I'm gonna drop this leg back further, get me opened up, a pre-kick. See, we're talking kick, slide, and we're talking slide, kick. 
So in order to be a step ahead, go ahead and pre-kick it. And then we're gonna use a scoot. It's here, cut that angle down, staying low, still having your power, but getting out on that angle where you can block that fast guy. Okay, first of all, first move was jumping him. Step, you go out, attack him before he can get going. That's a jump. Now you have a fast guy. You wanna cut that angle with the speed, so you pre-kick, you're back here, and you use a scoop, you get back there. So, and this is, with the fast guy, this is, takes priority probably with the number of guys over the, the jumping because of their speed. You want to pre-kick, then it's here, and then you're moving back fast, staying low. One thing we found that can be dangerous with this move, and it has over the past years, if you take that first slide and you get it too close here, it raises you up and it gets your footwork all messed up compared to right there. Shorter. Gives you better balance. Keeps you lower. Okay, uh, what we'd like to talk about now is a pass, protect, pass protection technique that we like to use against a guy that uses a bull rush, okay? Now some of these defensive guys will uh, use all kinds of swats and swims and rips and techniques, and one of the toughest techniques we see is when the defensive lineman comes right off the ball, puts his hands right into our chest. Remember, the ideal pass protection is where the offensive blocker comes up with his hands and he punches the guy right in the chest with his hands, boom. Okay, now, what happens, sometimes we come up with our hands and this guy's got his helmet and his hands right in our chest and our hands are out here. If we know we're playing a defender like that, I'll assume I'm a right tackle now, as I come out of my stance, I might hold my hands a little tighter and as he tries to come head on, I take my hands and come up. Now watch me from the side, up. You see, I'm up, I'm coming up, I'm not pushing out because I can't get my hands inside of him. His helmet's in the way, but I come up underneath him and I can kind of control up under there, okay? That's an upward lift. We like to use that against a man that uses a bull rush. Cut. I like, oh, I love it. You'll love it. Okay. Basically, when we see a bull rush, let's say we pass that and we look like this, and the guy's driving us back. He's put us his helmet right in our chest. What we like to do to beat the bull rush is just like we talked about with our feet. The man is pulling me backwards, pushing me backwards. Watch my feet. Boom, all right? I've hopped back on my insteps. I've lowered my center of gravity. I actually walk back with him as he's pushing me, and that lowers my center of gravity so I can start over again. So what we're saying, I'm pass blocking. The man is pulling me back. I have to lower my center of gravity, which means as I'm pass blocking, I have to walk backwards to get myself low again so I can pass block him. And the only way to do that is actually to hop backwards so I can lower myself so I can start over again. So you actually lose ground by hopping backwards to defeat the bull rush. Let's talk about how we try to defeat the rip, the rip or the swim technique. Okay, now, the swim technique first. If I'm Anthony playing a left tackle and I've got my hands up, here's what they try to do. They try to grab his outside shoulder and swim to the outside. So what Anthony will do is counter that swat and hit him in the chest. Okay, he'll counter that swat and hit him in the chest. Remember, a swim move by a defensive lineman is they do this, grab your outside, and then try to swim over the top. Well, just picture Anthony knocking his hand off, and as I go to swim, he hits me right in the chest with a hand. So it would look like this. Here's Anthony, he counters the swat, kind of karate action, hits him in the chest. Set, put. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, the big rip. What they like to do now is, let's say I'm Anthony, and they rip, which means the defensive lineman comes with this big uppercut and rip. He really leans on us, which shrinks us down, all right? When we see that big rip coming, all right, he gets that rip on us, whatever, we try to drop this foot and put our hand right on his hip, as long as it's inside, and we push him. So what you people are looking at now is Anthony's right hand pushing on the defensive man's left hip, and his left leg will drop. All right, here we go, on left. <laughs> Set, hut. One more. 
Okay. Take your time, Kenny. You don't have to go real fast. On hut. Set. Hut. So some of the basic moves that we see, the ball rush, the rip technique. Just show them how you push on the hip to the inside. All right, now the, uh, walk through what you're doing now, okay? So go to Anthony's other side. Set, hut. Uh, the swim technique, which we'll demonstrate with Anthony. A lot of times these defenders try to use what we call a slap down, all right? Which means that if Anthony Munoz comes out and puts his hands up, they try to knock the hands down. So that week, Anthony Munoz might pull his outside hand back, just like this, boom, as the guy goes to knock it down, he kind of falls on his face. So we pull that outside hand back. But basically, for an offensive tackle, when you block a wide guy, you're coming out here, you ought to keep your hands moving like a boxer so you don't forget and they stay down here. You always want them up moving. If there's one coaching point we believe in, let's say I'm the right tackle. I don't want to go like this to block. I want to jam, but I jam a little stronger with my inside hand. The outside hand's back a little bit. Remember, we might be countering and then hitting right into here. We might pull the outside arm back. But once we get the outside arm forward, we have a tendency to lean. Now, if Anthony is jumping the man or semi-jumping the man, he'll get on him so fast that he might put both hands on. So what we tried to cover in this session was how we would try to uh, counter the bull rush by hopping backward, all right, or using the upward lift, okay? We talked about uh, how to defend the rip technique, how to defend the swim technique, how to defend the slap down technique. And through all these phases now, you can use regular pass protection where you get on your normal angle and wait on the man, or you can jump them or semi-jump them. Anthony and I have enjoyed doing these uh, tapes, and we hope that it improves your offensive line play. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. I know for myself personally, it's been, uh, I mean, great for me being able to play in the NFL. But I think uh, most of all is the way I've been taught in the NFL. I've had Jim for the same coach uh, the last 11 years, hopefully uh, several more. And you know, I have to say that I've learned from the best. So hopefully you can take a lot of the stuff that Jim has talked about on, in the classroom and that we've demonstrated out here on the field. And it can help you no matter what level you're on.